Coca-Cola Japan has a new apple flavor. It's really good. Should not be drinking soda, but the seasonal Coke stuff is so good. Let's talk about concerts, guys. So admittedly, I'm not the biggest concert junkie. I don't go to a concert every weekend or anything like that. But of the concerts that I've been to in Japan, I have noticed some things that I really, really like about them. And I've overall had a better concert experience here in Japan than some of the concerts that I have been to in America. There's also some different rules concerning music concerts in Japan compared to the US, so I want to talk about those too. The first concert I went to in Japan was actually Summer Sonic, which is a festival, so uh, Japanese bands and non-Japanese bands from all over the world come to this event. So it's a little different. It's more of an international event. Earlier this year, I saw Wake Up Girls. You might know them. They're an idol group. They have an anime. I saw And You, which is a small but upcoming uh, idol group. I saw them down in Osaka. I saw Claris, who you might know from doing the music uh, in Madoka Magica, Oremo. Uh, they recently did the ending to Sells at Work. And just last week, I saw Nano Ripe here in Sendai. They were super awesome. You might know them from doing music in Food Wars, Nana Biori, Hanasaku Yuroha, Citrus, a bunch. Of, they do a bunch of stuff. The first thing I wanted to talk about is tickets. Tickets can be a nightmare for concert goers. I know how it is, especially general admissions tickets. Whew. It really sucks to get a general admission ticket and if you want to have barrier at the concert you usually have to sit outside of a venue for like eight hours depending on how big and popular the band is. Even for the smaller bands, uh, I, you know, I've had to wait for a couple hours outside of a venue. In Japan, there's a system that I've noticed put in place, at least at the few concerts that I've been to, that I really, really like. First things first, I actually reserve my concert tickets at a website called E+, and then I pay for those tickets that I reserve at a convenience store, usually Family Mart. For example, this is my uh, ticket, or was my ticket, for Nana Ripe last weekend. I don't really know if you can see it, but there is a reference number kind of like right here where there's all this kanji. And usually there's either a letter or a number here. This is a letter, it's the letter D. What this reference letter or sometimes a number is, is your spot in line to get into the venue. For example, when I went to go see Claris, I actually made a mistake. When I was in line outside of the venue for Claris, the venue staff started bringing out signs that said numbers 100 to 200, 200 to 300, 300 to 400, so on and so forth. And everyone was looking at their tickets and everyone was looking at their phones for this reference number. And I was searching on my ticket for this number and I could not find this number and I was so confused. I then realized what I had was not a ticket. I had a receipt with a reference number on it to pick up my ticket. So if you come to a concert in Japan, make sure you actually have a ticket. Do whatever you have to do. Google Translate your ticket. Make sure it's not just a receipt to be able to pick up your ticket. The reason why I had a receipt is because I, I bought these tickets kind of early, but they didn't have like actual physical tickets ready yet. So I had a piece of paper saying that this is my reference number to pick up my ticket. That was a mistake. I will not make that same mistake again, I hope. So 10 minutes before the venue opens for Claris, I actually run to Family Mart and put in my reference number and actually get my physical ticket. Now, because I actually printed my physical ticket only 10 minutes before the venue opened, I was pretty far back in line according to my reference number. For example, I think there was only 900 people that went to this concert and I was number 887 or something like that. So I learned my lesson there, but I also really like that system. It's just really nice to know that if I did have a higher number, like in the 100s or 200s, I wouldn't have to show up to the venue eight hours early. I could just show up 10 minutes before, stand in that line and have a really, really nice spot for the concert. So let's talk about actually making your way inside of the venue. This is something that was very, very different to me. Even if if you buy your ticket, a lot of venues require you to buy a drink ticket. This is almost like your fee to enter the venue, but you get a drink in, in, in exchange for it. For example, for Claris, the drink ticket was 500 yen. At the Claris venue, there, there was like no, no alcohol, so you had to buy a water bottle or a soda. Definitely not worth 500 yen for a bottle of soda or uh, a water bottle at that, but that's kind of your entrance fee into the venue. The tickets are so cheap that I don't really mind paying the 500 yen for 
getting into the venue. For Nana Ripe, it was actually 600 yen, but they also had alcoholic drinks available, so it makes it a little bit more worth your money. I still always just end up getting water because I need water when I'm jumping around at a concert. But just keep in mind that when you are lining up for a concert at a lot of these more club type venues, you're gonna wanna have maybe 500 or 600 yen in coins ready at the door. They don't want to wait for you to stand there with your wallet and dig around for coins. The staff will tell you in line to have your 500 or 600 yen ready to give in exchange for the drink ticket. Now, another one of my favorite things about getting inside the venue, especially at the Claris concert, and I've noticed this at a few other concerts, but mostly at the Claris concert, this worked out so nicely for me. A lot of the times there are areas on the floor of the concert reserved only for women, and I really, really like this. At Sunday Pit, which is where I saw Claris, I kind of walked in and since I was one of the last people in the building because of my, you know, ticket emergency, I knew I was probably going to have to be towards the back anyway, which was fine with me because luckily the stage was super high so I, that I could see the girls really well. But I actually made my way to the uh, women's area, which is kind of barriered off and you can go in and basically just be with a, a bunch of um, other females, which is super nice. Um, it wasn't very busy in the, it wasn't like there was like a hundred girls squeezed in a little space. I think there was only maybe 12 other girls in that space and it gave me, you know, a lot of room. Um, I just, you know, put, put my bag down and I had a really great view. So honestly, I really, really like, um, the girls section uh, in, at these concerts and in these venues. I don't think they give you a, a, a bad view or anything. Um, I had probably the best view I could have gotten uh, at the Claris concert in the women's only area. Not that I would feel safe if I wasn't in the women's area, but it's just nice to know uh, that you're just surrounded by a whole bunch of other girls. As a girl, other girls will understand. You know exactly what I mean. Number four is something that is super strict in Japan, and that is recording a concert. This is something you usually can't do with Japanese bands. I recorded at Summer Sonic, um, at least I recorded Paramore, because Paramore is a band is okay with you recording them, and there was something at Summer Sonic that said you could not uh, record certain bands. Usually if they're Japanese bands, Japanese bands don't like to be recorded. Um, they like to have very private shows. And this goes for a lot of, a lot of idol shows too. A lot of idol shows you can't record. However, I do know some idol shows where you can record and they'll clearly say you can record, but I, I feel like that's pretty rare. I could not record the uh, Claris concert and I could not record the Nanorite concert. But there's something about that that's really nice because in the US you always just have people almost watching the concert through their phones or they, they record the whole thing and you just see nothing but phones in the way of the view. That's the nice thing about Japanese concerts is that you, you don't have cameras blocking your view and everyone's just into the show. They're not into getting the best Instagram pic or the best video to put on Twitter. They're just really into the show and I think that's really cool. But yeah, please be mindful because they were really strict about this for Claris. They were they were holding signs, the staff were holding signs saying, please, no recording, like turn your phones off. Almost like a movie theater. They really want you to have your phones off. Don't record concerts you're not supposed to record. You could get thrown out. Number three, as I light this up, I got this at the Claris concert. Isn't this bright? It has so many settings and it just has a super bright setting. This is really cool. This is like the, the like people's phones at concerts. They don't use their phones to do whatever they're doing. They use these, these are really, really fun. The attitude of people and just the general feeling that I get at concerts in Japan has been super nice. In fact, I, I have so many stories to tell you guys about the Nano Rive concert in general. The, hospi the hospitality that I felt from people at that concert was just overwhelming. I'm gonna have to put it in another video. But fans like go crazy at these events, but you know, no one's rough or trying to hurt anyone. It's just, it's just a really good, wholesome time, I think. And this might just be like a nano right fan thing. Their fans might just be like super nice. Um, but I've heard some other stories like this uh, for Japanese concerts is that like people will take turns, like give people a chance to uh, be at the banister. And some of the concerts I've been to in the US, it is, it is kill or be killed, honestly, for some of these concerts. Um, just sometimes people are so rude just to get up, even just a good picture of the, of the band. Um, and I haven't had any problems like that in Japan at all. 
So it's been super nice. I love how interactive some of these concerts are, especially uh, the idol groups and the pop groups, but even like the more J Rocky groups like NaNoWripe, the, um, the actual band to audience interaction is so cool. It's so cool. And I've really, really enjoyed that. For example, the cheers, like there's specific cheers for mostly idols and uh, pop duos or something like that. Uh, which you, you do with these. They're really fun. It, it makes the experience more than just standing there watching a band. You are actually part of the show, it feels like. I, I really like that. I think of the things I've mentioned, my favorite thing about the Japanese concert is the queuing. I do like having a reference number for where your spot is in line. That's so nice. I know that in the future, I can just show up to a venue 10 minutes before they open, not hours before they open, and be guaranteed the spot that my ticket says. That is so nice. And I do love the, the women's only area. That's not in every venue, but uh, it's been a few venues that I've been in and it's super, super nice. Gosh, this is so bright. This could like blind you. I'm gonna turn it off now. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I was able to share a little bit of experience that I have had at concerts here in Japan. I will have another video coming out about, basically about the NaNoWrite concert and other things that have happened in Japan that have to do with the hospitality here. It's so great, but we'll get to that another day. Anyways, please don't forget to leave a comment and like below. That's very important for the videos and I will play with you some other time. What am I, what am I doing?